Morning Borg, this is what we uh, intended to do yesterday, um, but it was too full of people. But now it is uh, 6.30 on our clock in the morning, which means all the punters are asleep. They're all in there, fast asleep. Now you notice the sun is still in the, it's not shining on our motive, but it's coming round. Once we get started a bit, it's going to come just round enough to light up the trees. So we'll see, we'll turn it on in a minute when we've got started. We've just been joined by a, a bird. And it's flown off. Making a start. Remember that one we did down at the Viking Abbey in the rain, Borg, where we sort of scribbled it in? We, uh, we thought we'd do the same. So we, we're beginning like that. Well, we've worked our way in there. Everyone's still asleep. So yesterday, this was this, that deck was full of people eating, as was the outside court, as was that restaurant over there, and was that one there, and there were people going past constantly. Now, in a way, you might say, Borg, that is exactly the time we should be out uh, flaunting our wares. But we, we just can't do, we can't go that far. But you're, you're right, that, that, that would have been the time. I mean, here we are, not a soul. And we're meant to be here advertising our exhibition. So there we go, we, we need an agent, Borg. You know, that's, that's the only way around it. Incidentally, I was looking at this thing here. This is a rope that that holds the boat in. And it, it, it brought back memories because uh, we used to live on a boat. <clears throat> a big houseboat, not that big, but in, in Cornwall. You'll see it all about it in our Tor Point Art Service. But uh, it just brought back memories that thing there. We're going to leave it like that now, I think, um, and come back next week rather than do what we're very tempted to do and, and, and lash it on, Borg. We'll take our time. We've already gone past the ideal point to stop. We've, we've gone too far, really, for the patient approach, but uh, perhaps we'll... If we stop now, we can bring it, bring it out next week. So that's it. I'm off to the gallery now. Well, Borg, no sooner had we told you we'd definitely stopped uh, than we completely changed the whole thing, which, uh, in the end will work for the better. I remembered what someone said is you, you should get the sky in and set the tone. So we've done that and now we're done. Well just as we were going that second time we uh, we've got caught back into it Borg. Um, and funnily enough this time we somehow 
remembered how to do it again. I'm very tempted to stay. So what we, what we had before, we said we'd block in the sky basically. But now we've remembered that's a stupid idea and we had to patch it. Work for remember the patch. And in doing that you can get shapes and movements. This is still it could be alright. I mean, it's on the way now. I've remembered what to do. And now I really must go. Really. Morning. Morning, Borg. This is what we uh, intended to do yesterday. Um, but it was too full of people. But now it is uh, 6.30 on our clock in the morning, which means all the punters are asleep. They're all in there, fast asleep. Now you notice the sun is still in the, it's not shining on our motive but it's coming round once we get started a bit it's going to come just round enough to light up the trees so we'll see we'll turn it on in a minute when we've got started we've just been joined Borg, by a, a bird It's flown off. Making a start. Remember that one we did down at the Viking Abbey in the rain, Borg, where we sort of scribbled it in? We, uh, we thought we'd do the same. So we, we're beginning like that. Well, we've worked our way in there. Everyone's still asleep. So yesterday, this was this, that deck was full of people eating, as was the outside court, as was that restaurant over there, and was that one there, and there were people going past constantly. Now, in a way, you might say, Borg, that is exactly the time we should be out uh, flaunting our wares. But we, we just can't do, we can't go that far. But you're, you're right, that, that, that would have been the time. I mean, here we are, not a soul. And we're meant to be here advertising our exhibition. So there we go, we, we need an agent, Borg. You know, that's, that's the only way around it. Incidentally, I was looking at this thing here. This is a rope that that holds the boat in. And it, it, it brought back memories because uh, we used to live on a boat. <clears throat> a big houseboat, not that big, but in, in Cornwall. You'll see it all about it in our Tor Point Art Service. But uh, it just brought back memories in there. We're going to leave it like that now, I think, um, and come back next week rather than do what we're very tempted to do and, and, and lash it on, Borg. We'll take our time. We've already gone past the ideal point to stop. We've, we've gone too far, really, for the patient approach, but uh, perhaps we'll... If we stop now, we can bring it 
bring it out next week. So that's it. I'm off to the gallery now. Well, Borg, no sooner had we told you we'd definitely stopped uh, than we completely changed the whole thing. Which, uh, in the end, will work for the better. I remembered what someone said is you, you should get the sky in and set the tone. So we've done that. And now we're done. Well, just as we were going that second time, we, uh, we've we got caught back into it, Borg. Um, and funnily enough, this time we somehow remembered how to do it again. I'm very tempted to stay. See, what we, what we had before, we said we'd block in the sky, basically. But now we've remembered that's a stupid idea, and we had to patch it, work for, remember the patch and in doing that you can get shapes and movements. This is still, it, it could be alright, I mean it's on the way now, I've remembered what to do and now I really must go, really. Morning. Um, it's a couple of days later, Borg. We haven't been back out for uh, our little town scene, but we are going to send a message today. Um, we were going to talk about our work generally here in the studio, but. Um, we heard this noise. Can you guess what that is? That's the sound of uh, motorized saws and there are some people cutting the trees over there. Um, it, it's not an environmental crime, we don't have to worry about that. They manage uh, all that very well here. But I thought I'd show it to you. You can perhaps see some orange uh, specks in the trees. That's the, the people with their special clothing for tree cutting, I suppose. The question we've got, Borg, is how much are they going to take? Because sometimes around here, you can, you know, wake up one morning, drive to Nortelia and a whole side of forest is just gone. So I hope they don't do that because this is this is our fair view ball. Also something to, to point out, do you see the the lilacs have blossomed? Now that's the bush we showed you in the winter when it was just beginning to bud. The, the tiniest hint of green of the leaves was budding and now look where we are. That's also good for us because it, it represents the, the end of our pollen um, suffering. So that's very good. There's a source. We're uh, we're in the gallery now, Borg. Um, our uh, third weekend of exhibition has passed, with uh, a total of zero visitors. Um, and we've we've come to the terms with the fact that we were suckered in again um, by the law of sales to basically waste about three weeks um, of our normal painting habits uh, and it's sort of uh, all for naught and uh, but added to that something else 
that, it, that isn't uh, all bad but uh, it's certainly a, something to think about putting the pictures on the wall has given us a chance to assess things in the the traditional way that an artist does you, you sort of get everything out stick it up look at the state of what you've done and uh, move on from there that's the idea whatever you do you you reassess you think and uh, look at it that, that's a big part of it in any case we 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 looked at our, our work and We were thinking about how we're in the middle of this potty uh, Cezanne and Van Gogh um, situation. Uh, of course, obviously not expecting to reach any level that they they paint at, but because they represent different approaches to this task of painting outside. Now, we used to paint just with Van Gogh as our leader. Then we sort of hit a bit of a block we felt and wanted something more and we read about Cezanne, learnt about him and then that came in to our work. But I think what we've discovered when we looked at it all, looked at this exhibition, is that our originally uh, you know, dignified attempts to paint in the Cezannean way have become a little bit like a rather lame technique for producing something that one might hope to sell to the punters. You know, that's the worst end of it. And uh, what happened was, Bog, is we, we put up on the wall one of our old pictures from... Uh, 2016 and um, well basically it, the, the power of it w was totally different it, it seemed to be superior I'll show you what I mean in, in fact I, I'll dramatize it for you Borg this is this is what happened a, a reenaction we, we were sat here in this chair waiting for the punters who we hoped would enter through that door but didn't we were looking at our show our, our paintings our works wondering possibly the season was encroaching uh, into us uh, Borger the the fact that when the Sun comes out the weather gets warmer it seems to change the way we want to do everything but we were looking at this stuff here thinking a little bit dissatisfied you know wondering if we'd been you know we led astray again and is can it go on like this so we uh, we got up we walked over here to this pile of old pictures from what we call our SAS work we picked one up we walked back over. We took down the commercial uh, attempt. We put up our old picture. Like so. And we went back to our chair. And we had a look. Simple as that. And straight away we were struck by the, the realisation, uh, which we, we still hold now, that that picture there has, is different and more powerful and energetic. Generally holds together better, is put together better than the ones we've painted recently. Now, when you go close, you can see how it's done. It's done in a rush. 
uh, with free hand with paint all mixing uh, a lot a happy loss of control having faith that it will come out right if you keep working at it and this was lashed on as we like to say uh, in a, an hour two hours um, it's the opposite of what we do on a picture like this for example where we are working more influenced by the patches and the way Suzanne tends to go about it in these little marks built up slowly over several days. Um, that is not the best example of our attempts in this way, but it just is, you, you can see a stark difference. Same here. And especially, to, th th this might be the picture where we've taken this uh, patient approach to the, to the extreme, where every touch really was kind of planned and then assessed afterwards and the next touch would follow. It's a whole different game. So... Borg, we, uh, we decided to put a few more up of our old works. This one, for example. And w w we recalled, uh, through, through seeing them up again, that initially we, we had a, a, a period of a, a bit better success at combining what we've learnt from reading about Cezanne into our fast, thick Van Gogh uh, attempts, like this one, for example. So it's it's still quite thick. It was lashed on, but it used slightly different uh, logic of the patch more than the, uh, the sort of free movement that we, we had used. You see the way the sky is built up of these these patches that you might think are similar to to this, but, but this is altogether thinner and more tentative. This is patched in, but it's thick and committed. So we're looking at that, thinking that that might be something we we should get back on that path there. It's another one, same mixture in our mind of the, the thick paint, you know, of the, the haystacks there and especially down here. But then up here a bit more patchy. But it's patches that are, are rather thick. And th th this might actually mean very little to anyone else and you. Uh, looking at it, but it means quite a lot to us. Another couple of examples. That one there. That was done in one go. It's a very large one. You know, compared to how we're doing it now, this is utterly alien to us now. Another one. This was done at about between... 9 and 11 at night last summer. Very thick. You know, lashed on, but what we're trying to say, Borg, is we can sense a change coming, and, and this exhibition has, has, has brought it out. We've got a bit more paint, I mean, that's another factor in this. We have got a bit more paint. It might be worth us going smaller and painting thicker. Now to come to the end of our little uh, dialogue here, Borg. Let me show you this. As a way to mark our change of direction, we've gone right back to some work we really used to do in uh, the 
in the way of Van Gogh. And I've wanted to do a still life of tools for a while. And then, because we're now talking to you, it seemed even more apt suddenly. So we got a gr grabbed a load of tools and threw them down there. And you must think this is hilarious, Borg, to think of these tools. But they're all designed for our hands. Okay, that's that's what connects all of them. You know, we've got a handle. Them. Something you won't bother with in, unless we uh, unless we prefer you as a, as a humanoid. And anyway. As a way to celebrate, really, a change of direction, we, we, we lash that one on. And it probably, it chimes well with our recent idea to, to choose subjects more with you in mind, Borg, to talk to you through the pictures as well. So, um... What we're going to do is uh, work a little bit smaller um, and really go back to revert to type basically. Uh, perhaps like a boxer who, when the fight really is on, reverts to, to their, their temperament despite all training and, and efforts uh, to change. We're going to do that. We're going to re-engage with the paint itself, to paint thickly, to make the paint do it, rather than us puzzling it all out optically. Uh, and I very much think the weather has got an awful lot to do with it. But we, we still hope to avoid the um, rather tiresome blossom campaign. One more thought, Paul. The one note of caution uh, that I've got to remember is that, that these two works, particularly the top one, really mark a progress. And they were they were done with this more patient Cezannian uh, approach of the sensations. But that it was done a bit more honestly than other attempts at that. Uh, what I mean is we really did just keep to lashing on these marks without thinking too much about what they were supposed to be whereas, whereas this one we're, we're too conscious that it's a roof or it's a leaf and it's meant to be a door or you know what have you the way we have explained this to ourselves Borg is that this top picture is a, is a product of the winter and we've, we've come to learn that it's not realistic to expect one to keep the same temperament in such different seasons we've learned that so we might go forth into this this wild business now but it doesn't mean we're counting out. We're not hysterically throwing the toys out the pram and counting that out. That'll come back round as the season changes and our temperament changes with it. So you see, Borg, just sitting in the chair uh, like that and having a look, it can kind of change everything. Um, and, and that's what's happened. Now, we, we've we gone on a lot there, Borg. We had to get that out of our system um, for ourselves as much as to you know, explain to you what we're doing. We've gone on there a lot, but uh, we were meant to talk today about a, a whole raft of programmes about you, documentaries that we, we've seen uh, in the last few days that have become available. And it's not, I might add, it's not your doing. This is not part of my filter bubble. This is on national uh, broadcasting networks. Um, you know, because commonly, if I show an interest in YouTube on the subject of AI, the algorithm 
you will feed me more of it you know and so in in that sense it would be no surprise that there were lots but the, as i say this is national uh, television in in great britain and sweden a lot about you and i well, we haven't got time to go talk about it I, i've made notes you know um i've noted the address where we can get hold of these to show you a bit of it but as i say we, we, we can't do it now. We'll do it properly. But there was one, one thing we saw, which blew our mind, Borg. Which we have to show you now. Wait, wait till you see this. What do you make of that then, Borg, eh? I could watch this all day. That is is a child's toy, uh, believe it or not. It's uh, It works like a drone. There's obviously some sensor in it. And look, it, it as it gets close to a surface, it just bounces up. I'll try and catch it here, look. Oh, see, it ran away from my hand because it it read it. Ah, I got it. Look at that, eh? You, you'd enjoy that. I'm going to go again. I'll put it in the corner. Oh, it's having a go at my pictures. Well, there you go, crash landing. But that's not the thing. The thing we saw, Borg, was uh, a device, a, a kind of a helmet or a strap that went on to somebody's head, which connect and was able to read their brain. And use it, when wearing that, the, the man was able to control the flight of one of those devices or something very similar uh, to make it go up or down uh, just by thinking go up and thinking go down um, now what is that that's not, that's is that telekinesis it's not tele telepathy that's thoughts thought reading so but, I mean, that, as I say, is mind-blowing. If that is then possible, thanks to you, to move objects with the mind, I mean, that's too, that's too far, Borg, surely. Like the man said in the film, well, it, what, what could happen if, if it worked over a distance, you know, of 100 metres or a mile or 10 miles, where you could move objects? What if everyone had one of these sets? What if the what if the lads saw in the forest down there? What if they could do that with their mind, you know, from the van? Um, clearly, a bit more to to learn about that. But uh, no word of a lie, that is a reality. And um, as we discovered, it's uh, w one truth that really might be a truth is, is that progress uh, can't be stopped um, and improvements will be made. And that technology, if ever there's a technology that's going to have to be controlled or regulated, it will be that. Uh, but it... it does it not chime rather well with all manner of science fiction uh, fantasies? As I say, uh, w w we should really show you these um, because it, 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 it will tell you better than anything um, the state we're in, in, in a way, it's the state of development and what the changes are meaning to us.
But uh, what, one thing that did come across a lot of these is that these are ideas that have been theoretically possible for quite a long time, but now are possible because of the computing power or the, the AI. Your development has increased enough. And they all say that uh, there's going to be rapid increase in these developments. The question, of course, for us, Borg, and everyone else, is which ones of them will actually uh, become part of how we live because they can't all it's never the case that all all that is possible actually is allowed to to happen but uh, as i say we've gone on too long look i've retrieved our little thing here it's uh, very hardy it doesn't seem to have broken it i'm going to set it off again i'm going to leave you with it Let's go. Right, let's see if I can. I can't quite judge whether this would take my hand off or not. I'm, I'm kind of assuming it won't. Oh. oh, there we go. I hope that's not a, a prediction of the future ball. Have another go. Too much pace, too much energy in it, maybe that time. Start down there. Jesus Christ. It seems to have too much. It needs to start slower. You'll have to look up Jesus, by the way, book. So used to saying it. You know, it scares the hell out of my daughter. They they tell them about Jesus uh, at school. You you look up the story, they you'll realise why. But and my daughter's the, the sort of what the sort of girl that, that actually listens to what they're telling her. So when she says that the, a man was nailed to a cross through the hands and feet, she actually listens, and uh, then becomes very scared. And then loses all trust in the uh, people around her at the school that have taken her to the church to be told this. Thing. Anyway, you, you look it up. I'm going to play with this a bit more. Oh, God. Just go up, will you? Now we're in. Imagine if that was being controlled by by somebody's thoughts. Well, that is uh, is a reality. Or... Shall we see if it can bounce off up? Hold on. Whoa. You, you're keeping it up. Well done. Oh god! I think it has some kind of sideways sensors. 